Hello students. So let us continue our discussion on Riemann integration. So today's lecture uh, we will be considering this uh, two topics. That is the integrability of the product quotient and modulus of integrable functions. And if time permits, uh, we will also discuss the fundamental theorems of integral calculus. So uh, let us start with the first topic. Okay. Uh, this is the integrability of the product quotient and modulus of integrable functions. Okay, so we have three theorems here. Uh, the first one is about products. If f and g are two integrable functions on AB, then their product fg is integrable on AB. Okay, we have already seen uh, that sum of two integrable functions is integrable. Okay, so here we'll see that the product of two integrable functions is also integrable. So since f and g, so the proof begins here, since f and g are integrable functions, uh, so they are bounded, right? So there exists a number k greater than 0 such that mod of fx is less than or equal to k and mod of gx is less than or equal to k for all x in ab, okay? Actually, it's k1 and k2 uh, for f, f, f and g, but we can always take the maximum of k1 and k2. Okay, so it will work for both the functions, right? So we can select a common upper bound for both the functions. Now, what is fg of x? Mod of fg of x is mod of fx into gx. And this can be separated as mod fx into mod gx. And this can be written as less than or equal to k multiplied with k. Because mod of fx is less than k, mod of uh, gx is less than or equal to k. So ultimately, mod of fg of x is less than k squared, okay? So fg is bounded, right? So we have sh shown that if f and g are bounded, then the product fg is also bounded. Now let epsilon greater than zero be given. So what we have to prove? We have to show that fg is integrable. That means we have to construct upfg minus lpfg, or uh, say we have to construct that and we have to show that it's uh, it can be made less than epsilon by choosing a proper partition, right? So let epsilon greater than zero be given and let p equal to x0, x1, x2 up to xn be any partition of AB. Also let mi dash, small mi dash, capital mi double dash, small mi double dash and mi and uh, capital mi and small mi be the supremum and infimum of f, g and fg respectively in xi minus one to xi. Okay, I missed the word respectively here. So you can write it respectively. Okay, this is the one. So for uh, so we will try to find out uh, a relation between m i uh, these quantities m i small m i m i dash capital m i dash like that. Okay, so we observe that for any x y in this interval, sorry, for any x y in this uh, this interval x i minus one to x i f g of x minus f g of y. This can be written as f x g x minus f y g g y and then i can introduce f x g y minus f x g y and then plus f x g y so the resulting sum is same minus f y g y so what can we do we can take f x common f x into g x minus g y plus g y into f x minus f y okay so we take modulus modulus of this quantity by triangle inequality it will be less than or equal to mod f x multiplied with mod gx minus mod um, mod of gx minus gy plus mod gy multiplied with mod of fx minus fy okay and we can write this is less than or equal to k into mi double dash minus small, small mi double dash right because uh, capital mi double dash is the supremum of g and small mi double dash is the infimum of g okay and it can be shown that this capital mi double dash minus small mi double dash is actually the supremum of mod of gx minus gy okay and uh, yeah the, we, we will show this here so i've written it as a note so in exams you may avoid this but this note and you can assume that it's known right so i've just shown it here how uh, this capital uh, mi minus small mi is the supremum of the um, oscillation 
right of the modulus of gx minus gy or fx minus fy okay so i have shown it for f it is true, true for all functional mm -hmm. functions so uh, mi dash fx lies between mi dash and capital mi dash right and uh, so we, we can also write fy lies between mi dash and mi double and yeah, capital mi dash right where x and y are any arbitrary element right so we, we want to find out a relation for or upper bound for fx minus fy right so we multiply this with minus one so they, and then we'll get minus mi dash less than or equal to minus f of y less than or equal to minus small mi dash okay and then we can add them up so ultimately we will get mod of fx minus fy is always less than or equal to uh, capital mi dash minus small mi dash so it's an upper bound right now i have to show that it's a is the least upper bound okay so we start with any epsilon greater than zero so since capital mi dash is the least upper bound of f so there exists an x so which satisfies fx is strictly greater than mi dash minus epsilon by 2 and since small mi dash is the greatest lower bound so there is an y which satisfies uh, fy is strictly less than mi dash plus epsilon by 2 okay and then we subtract this to fx minus fy will be strictly greater than mi dash minus small mi dash minus epsilon that means uh, a, a, no number less than mi dash minus small mi dash can be an upper bound of this collection fx minus fy right so this is the least upper bound okay so this result we have used so thus uh, so just uh, let us have a look so mod of fgx minus fgy is less than or equal to this fixed quantity so that means it is an upper bound of this collection so this quantity the quantity in the right hand side is an is an upper bound of this collection fgx minus fgy says that xy belongs to this integral okay but capital mi minus small mi is its least upper bound so what should be the relation the relation is this is less than or equal to this plus this and then we multiply both sides by delta xi that is the length of each sub interval and then take the summation okay so this sum is nothing but the upper sum upf upfg minus lpfg and this sum is nothing but upf minus lpf this sum is nothing but upg minus lpg so we have this relation right now can we make this quantity less than epsilon by something and can we make this quantity less than epsilon by something so what is that something it should be epsilon by we should be able to make it less than epsilon by two times of k so this k and k will get cancelled and this quantity also we should be able to make it less than epsilon by twice k okay so ultimately this quantity the quantity in the left hand side is less than epsilon okay and this is possible why because f is integrable and g is integrable okay so this is what we are going to write since f and g are integrable so for the above epsilon uh, there existed delta greater than zero such that for every partition p with uh, every partition p of a b okay please add that part also every partition p of a b okay with uh, norm p less than delta upf minus lpf is less than epsilon by twice k and upg minus lpg is also less than epsilon by twice k hence for all such partitions one implies what one implies that upfg minus lpfg is less than k into epsilon by twice k plus k into epsilon by twice k, twice k which is equal to epsilon hence fg is integrable okay so product of two integrable functions is integrable now uh, the next theorem gives uh, the uh, quotient of two integrable functions is integrable okay so there are some extra conditions here let f and g be two integrable functions on a b and there exist a lambda greater than zero such that uh, mod of gx is strictly uh, so sorry greater than or equal to lambda for every x inside a b that means gx doesn't take the value zero right uh, so g modulus of gx is strictly greater than or equal to some um, positive quantity okay then f f by g is integrable on a b okay so we proceed exactly the same way or similar way just like the first proof so since f and g are bounded on a b so there exists a k greater than zero such that mod of fx is less than k mod of gx is less than or equal to k for every x in a b so this is just like the earlier one we need to show that f by g is bounded so uh, what is mod of f by g of x it is mod of fx by 
mod gx but mod of fx is less than or equal to k and mod gx 1 by mod gx will be less than or equal to 1 by lambda because mod gx is less than or equal greater than or equal to lambda so 1 by mod gx will be less than or equal to uh, 1 by lambda okay this is what uh, we have applied here okay so f by g is bounded so f by g is bounded by k by lambda okay so i have uh, not written it so clearly uh, please try to write it clearly here okay let uh, so now we start with any epsilon greater than zero and we'll try to find find out or we'll try to estimate the uh, oscillatory sum for f by g okay so for any partition p equal to x naught x one up to x n of a b let capital m i dash small m i dash capital m i double dash small m i double dash and capital M I and small M I be the supremum and infimum of F G and F by G in the interval X I minus 1 to X I for each I equal to 1 to up to N. Okay, so right if you observe nicely, the writings are almost similar to the first proof. Okay, so it should not be that difficult. So for any X Y in this interval, what is mod of F by G of X minus F by G of Y? It is F X by G X minus F Y by G Y. So if you take LCM, it's uh, um, just if you compute this difference, it's mod of fx gy minus fy gx divided by mod gx mod gy. Okay, then just we introduce this fx gx term and um, so, so, sub, add this and subtract this. Okay, so this is this quantity is less than or equal to mod of fx into mod of gy minus gx plus mod of gx into mod of fx minus fy. Okay. So this is again less than or equal to k times of m i double dash minus small m i double dash just like the earlier proof and this is less than or equal to k times of m i dash minus small m i dash and 1 by g x is less than 1 by lambda 1 by g y is less than 1 by lambda okay that is what is required. So we can take k by lambda square common so we will get uh, k by lambda square into m i double dash minus small m i double dash plus m i dash minus m i dash. Thus this quantity is an upper bound of this collection f, f by g of x minus f by g of y. But capital m i minus small m i is its least upper bound hence the relation is this should be less than or equal to this. Okay, So then again we multiply both sides by delta x i and take the summation. Okay, if we take the summation, we will get the upper sum of f by g with respect to p that is up f by g minus lp f by g is less than or equal to k, k by lambda square into upg plus minus lpg plus upf minus lpf. Okay, now we can make this quantity less than whatever we want because this is integrable and also we can make this quantity less than whatever we want because this quantity is also integrable. So this is what I have written. Um, now if uh, f and g are integrable, so for epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0, such that for every partition p of a b with norm p less than delta, we have upf minus lpf less than lambda square epsilon by twice k and upg minus lpg is less than lambda square epsilon by twice k. Okay. Hence from 1, upf by g minus lpf by g is less than epsilon. So f by g is integrable. Okay. So this is the proof. Now the last theorem that is uh, if f is integrable on a b then mod f is also integrable on a b and there is a relation mod of integration is less than or equal to integration of the modulus. Okay, This is what. So since f is integrable so the, it is bounded on a b so there exists a k greater than 0 such that mod of fx is less than or equal to k for all x. Right, so this can be written as mod f, the function mod f applied on x less than or equal to k for every x in a b. That means mod f is bounded. Okay, mod f is bounded by the same bound. Uh, so we start with any epsilon greater than zero. Then for any partition p equal to x naught x one up to x n of a b, let m i dash and small m i dash, capital m i and small m i be the supremum and infimum of f and mod f respectively on x i minus one to x i for each i equal to 1 to up to n okay and then we'll try to estimate this difference oscillatory sum uh, yeah or the oscillation sorry not the oscillatory sum the oscillation okay uh, so for any x y in this interval mod of f, mod f of x minus mod f of y 
is mod of fx minus mod of fy and by triangle inequality this is less than or equal to mod of fx minus fy okay. and uh, thus uh, this modulus is also uh, less than or equal to this quantity okay. so no actually i should have uh, written it this way mod of No, actually the modulus should should have been here. Mod of fx minus mod of fy. This is less than or equal to. So yeah, so I missed this here. So this should, there should be a modulus here. Modulus of this, okay. Modulus of this quantity is uh, equal to modulus of another modulus should be there. Modulus of this. modulus of this is modulus of mod of fx minus mod of fy and that is less than or equal to mod of fx minus fy okay this is this result is always true okay so thus uh, mod of this is less than or equal to mod of fx minus fy and what is this this is mi dash minus small mi dash so mi dash minus small mi dash is an upper bound of mod of fx minus mod of uh, f mod f of x minus mod f of y but capital mi minus small mi is the least upper bound hence uh, this should be the relation capital mi minus small mi is less than or equal to capital mi dash minus small mi dash multiply both side by delta xi and then take the sum so this is nothing but up mod f minus lp mod f less than or equal to upf minus lpf okay so if uh, now f is integrable on a b so there exists a del epsilon greater than 0 uh, so sorry so for a, for epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 such that for every partition p of a b with norm p less than delta we have u p f minus l p f is less than epsilon so from one it follows that u p mod f minus l p mod f that is also less than epsilon so f is integrable okay the next part is uh, we know that mod of uh, x is same as maximum of x comma minus x okay this is another definition of mod x mod x is maximum of maximum of x comma minus x okay. so that means modulus of uh, x is always greater than or equal to x also it is also greater than or equal to minus x okay this is what i will use here so we have mod of x is greater than or equal to fx for every x in ab so in the la last lecture we had already done if fx is greater than or equal to gx for every x in ab then integration of f is greater than or equal to integration of g okay and this is what we will use here so mod of fx is greater than or equal to fx implies integration of mod of fx is greater than or equal to integration of a to b fx you can just change the sides integration a to b f, f dx is less than or equal to integration of mod of f dx okay and mod of fx is also greater than or equal to minus mod of um, minus f of x so integrate both sides so this is the inequality is preserved okay and then you take the minus sign outside it can come out uh, out of out of the integration by properties of integration and so minus of mo integration a to b mod fx dx is less than or equal to a to b fx so compare 2 and 3 so we will get minus of this less than integration a to b fdx less than the same thing okay so a to b fdx lies between minus integration mod f to plus integration mod f that means modulus of this quantity is less than or equal to a to b fdx okay so we have shown this part okay so these are the three theorems uh, which we have discussed uh, so in the next lecture so today uh, we are not covering the fundamental theorems of integral calculus uh, please take time in preparing um, or in going through this uh, these three theorems so in the next lecture probably tomorrow i'll upload the fundamental theorems on integral calculus okay. and then we'll be left with some mean value theorems on integral calculus and some problems okay. that will finish our first two units okay Thank you.